Hello everyone, my name is Madina Nazarova and today I will be presenting about bulimia nervosa for my psych 3600 class. When learning about a disease, a person usually wants to start off with finding out about its historical background. This disorder has been around for a while even though people may not have realized it at first. It traces back to ancient Egypt, Rome, Greece and even Arabia. Vomitoriums were created for post feasts that these ancient civilizations would have. They would go into these rooms and just remove all of this food from their feasts that they would have. In 1979, a British psychiatrist, Gerald Russell, called this disease a chronic phase of anorexia nervosa, making it a little more serious than anorexia nervosa because these people have it placed in their mind to remove all the food that they ate. So instead of starving themselves, what they did was eat to their fullest point and then just remove it. So this term literally translates to nervous, ravenous hunger. Now moving onwards, let's talk about what this disorder is. So as we know, it is an eating disorder, but what makes it so different than the others? Well, this one, People first binge eat out of control, and then this activity is followed by purging. The purging can go many ways. Some people choose to vomit to release this food. Some choose to take laxatives. And many even put themselves through excessive activity, whether it be at the gym or in their neighborhood, but they try to wear themselves out to burn these calories that they just consumed. Another possible way to lose these calories that they think would work is through fasting. They do all of these to prevent the weight gain after they're binge eating out of control. Now, let's talk about the binge purge cycle. Let's start with the yellow circle where it says binge eating. Now, let's go on to the pink circle, purging. So after these people binge eat and consume as many calories as they possibly can, and consume as much food that as their body can hold, they purge, which we discussed on the previous slide. There's many different ways of doing this, and it depends on the person and their style of purging. Now moving onwards, they receive these feelings of shame, guilt, and low self-worth after purging. Then after that, they think their problem can be solved if they restrict their body of calories. Basically, they fast or just don't let themselves eat for as long as they could. However, then afterwards they receive an increased tension and emotions build up and their psychological cravings, of course, rack up as well. And then after that, after they see food, the binge eating starts again and the cycle continues. This is just about the daily life of a bulimia nervosa patient. Let's talk about the age-gender of onset. This disease affects primarily young women, ages 13 to 40, although it is possible for males to also have it. It's classified as a developmental disorder, meaning it happens and it affects people when they are just learning about their bodies or about their diet or lifestyles. It is very typical in younger women and girls for the fact that possibly they're looking for relationships and trying to understand their bodies more in their early years. And they turn to bulimia nervosa as a coping technique. Moving onwards to the signs and clinical symptoms. You can tell a person has this disease by a couple of physical signs that they have, which can range from Russell sign, tooth decay, swollen salivary glands, acid reflux, a sore throat, hoarse voice, or dehydration. In the images that I included, you can look at the physical signs. The first one, the Russell sign, this would happen amongst the ring finger and the pointer finger, the two common areas that get affected of the knuckle because of the constant throat vomiting and throwing up where the person would insert their hand into the mouth and these two parts would get like blister-like looking um, parts. And now the guy, he has those swollen salivary glands, which is also known as salidinosis. 
and the teeth are decaying because of all of the acid reflux that the mouth and teeth are constantly faced with from that throw up. As for the psychological science, these people have a preoccupation with eating food or body shape and weight. So they also have a sensitivity to comments relating to food, weight, body shape, or exercise, including a low self-esteem, feelings of shame, self-loathing or guilt after their eating, having, dis having a distorted body image, obsession with food and need for control, and of course, all of that would be tied in with depression, anxiety, or irritability. Furthermore, on the sensitivity to comments. This means that when a person would receive a comment on either their food that they eat, their weight or body shape or the exercise that they do, they would respond in an either defensive way or just walk away and be very upset, drop a few tears. They would respond to this very sensitively because they would know that this affects them a lot some behavioral signs include the evidence of binge eating, the people eating in private, repetitive or obsessive behaviors relating to body shape and weight, or like I've mentioned before, excessive exercise, or dieting behavior. Certain dieting behavior can also be a sign, or also frequent trips to the bathroom. This could, of course, be evidence of these people vomiting, especially if it's after post-eating. However, if you catch someone just stuffing their face with as much food as they can, as if there was no tomorrow, this is a really big sign. As well as if they take their food into a corner of the room away from the crowd and continuously eat, that's also a sign. As well as those frequent trips to the bathroom. And now, of course, let's talk about the causes. So, it can definitely be genetically inherited. Research actually shows a 7-12% to increase. And there's certain psychological factors, like sensation seeking or addiction to food. Also, environmental stress, like traumatic experiences or pandemics that we are actually in right now, for instance, can affect these people to go to bulimia nervosa. Also, feelings of guilt or shame can also cause this disease. One of the most biggest causes, however, is pressure from society and mass media. People, and especially young women, are constantly faced with models and images of unrealistic figures from social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook, and when they look at those, they assume they have to look just like that. Those celebrities that eat what they want to and have all the money in the world and still look very beautiful with their curvy figures. People compare themselves to these influencers and then sometimes it can result in disorders like this. And also another cause would, could be a pressure from parents or siblings and even friends. And then finally, another cause that I would like to talk about is direct messages or even indirect ones. So when you next time you hear someone saying something to someone about their weight or food or anything in particular like that, try to stop them because even the littlest, smallest messages can really affect a person. And if they get attached to it, it can lead to disorders such as bulimia nervosa. Just as this disease has causes, there are, of course, effects. So the central nervous system effects include the depression, anxiety, and even substance abuse that comes from that depression and anxiety. The digestive system gets affected too. This can range from stomach pain to tooth decay, which we already talked about. The circulatory system receives dehydration, heart failure is possible, as well as low blood sugar from that constant purging. Now, moving on to the reproductive system, there can be a hormonal imbalance. The fatigue can even kill the sex drive. 
And finally, the integumentary system cannot be forgotten. There could be hair loss and poor nail growth and even unhealthy skin. That is because of all the lack of nutrients and minerals that these patients are not receiving. After throwing up everything you eat, nothing is really left but the negative side effects of this disease. Let's talk about the treatment. So, this is not a one-size-fits-all type of treatment. There's different routes that different levels of bulimics can take. For instance, there's mind-body therapy, meaning people can participate in group activities such as yoga, tai chi, or even dance at their local gyms. There's also psychotherapy, for example, that behavior therapy where a therapist would have one-on-one -on -one sessions with these patients and talk about different types of behavior patterns that they can change in their lives to decrease this disease. And then also, of course, there's the medicational route. For example, people can take serotonin or reuptake inhibitors, including Prozac, Zoloft, Celexa, and Lexapro. There's also that nutrition education dash counseling, which also can be done by a psychological professional. And for the stronger cases, these people can be hospitalized and monitored daily. This disease does not just affect the ordinary people. Famous celebrities throughout the years have been known to have it also. So it can affect anyone at any time in their lives. For example, Princess Diana, Britney Spears, Kesha, Demi Lovato, Lindsay Lohan, and Lady Gaga are known publicly to have suffered from this disease. For Princess Diana, it was her escape mechanism. She was always the public's eye of attention and she always thought she would have to look professional and beautiful and skinny. And after eating, what she would turn to is purging. Then another celebrity that I would like to talk about more in depth would be Britney Spears. Since her first time, uh, known as Baby One More Time in 1999, Britney Spears' personal life has been in the headlines. She has been in and out of rehab in an effort to ditch her problems with alcohol, drugs, and bulimia. It was reported that she was dealing with bulimia, bulimia nervosa since the age of 16 to prevent gaining weight. She stopped during her two pregnancies but started again after her sons were born in order to get rid of that baby weight. In conclusion, bulimia nervosa is a really serious eating disorder. It is really important to not make fun of those who have it right now. For all we know, we may get it in the near future. It is also very important to support those that have it and offer them different treatment plans. Before saying that negative comment next time about somebody's body, diet, or weight, just know that behind the closed doors, we don't really know what's going on in their lives. For all we know, they may be suffering with this eating disorder or even another one. So just be cautious before you say something. And if you or a loved one have this disease, just know that you are not alone and there are many treatment plans and options for you and that we are here for you. Thank you. And on the last page, you can find my references to this presentation.